Oh. Lauren, a brunette woman in a blue floral dress enters a dark room with a glass in her hand. She collapses and the glass shatters. Fade to black, text appears, one week earlier. Lauren sits on a couch with an older blonde woman looking at a photo album. <laughs> I've seen these in forever. Is that you? You look so young. Hey, I still look young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, you do. Oh, I was there for your mom during her pregnancy as a, her midwife with you, and now here I am for you and this little one. She points at the brunette woman's enlarged stomach. You know, she's watching over you now, keeping both you and baby safe. Whatever happens, I'll always be there to help. I know you will. You always have. All right, I should probably head home. Anthony probably doesn't know where I am. <laughs> but thank you for the tea and the delicious cookies. You know what, before you go, uh, can you do me a small favor? They hang a hidden security camera in a birdhouse on the porch. Okay, I think that should be good. Thanks for helping me with this. <laughs> a little extra security never hurt anyone. Yeah, not a problem. It's actually a good thing. All of the footage is going to download itself straight to your laptop. Mm. Make it sound so easy. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now everything here should sync up to your phone. Ah. Like that. And so it did. <laughs> <laughs> no idea how you did that. You're a genius over here. Yes, of course. <laughs> so. Anthony's work is, is going well? Yeah, yeah, it's going great. He's super busy. You know, there's something I, um, I need to tell you. Truly, is everything all right? Yeah. They glance at the door. Uh, are you expecting someone? Oh, gosh, I've oh. so many orders lately. <laughs> oh, and there he is. There's the delivery guy. Oh, well done. Oh, the delivery. Um, this. I ordered the same thing for you. What? I want you to install it at your house. We live in a really safe neighborhood. I. You know what? You can never be too safe, especially with baby on the way. Please? <laughs> yeah. OK. Thank you. Lauren accepts the birdhouse camera. At night, Julie stands in her kitchen, washing dishes. She stops and cocks her head. She dries off her hands, then crosses the room, heading towards the door. Hello? Is anyone there? She opens the front door. Hello? The lit front porch sits empty. She closes the door and a figure in a ski mask grabs her from behind. She knocks over a vase. She elbows her attacker, then runs upstairs. She runs into a bathroom and closes the door. The assailant pushes the door as she leans against it. The door bursts open and she topples to the ground, knocking over a small table. The figure in black climbs on top of Julie and begins strangling her. Julie grabs a cuticle trimmer and jams it into her attacker's shoulder. They fall off her and she gets up. They grab her, then bash her head on the bathtub. Fade to black. Text. A Tubi presentation. An enlightened content production. An axe lies in darkness. Credits appear over glitched footage in a home at night.
Jessica Londis, Elysia Ritaru, Lauren Kirsten Robeck, John Cassini. Casting by Ann Forey. Costume designer, Mackenzie Sarin. Music by Kent Rock. Editor, Jesse Leone. Production designer, Jordan Ninkovich. Someone types at a computer. A phone sits off the hook. Director of photography, Toby Gorman. Associate producers, Christina Sturgeon, Stephanie Rennie, Richard Greenshaw. Producer, Tara Cowell Plain. Executive producers, Kimberly Wakefield, Rita Nasser, Jack Nasser, Jacob Nasser. Screenplay by Helen Marsh and Carolyn Wolner. Directed by Monica Mitchell. A title appears over an ultrasound, Deadly Midwife. In a clinic, Lauren gets an ultrasound. Anthony, a thin man with short dark hair and glasses stands at her side. And there's your baby. <laughs> oh, see that? There's the feet. And... That's the head. Yes. Oh, it looks like there's a nuchal cord. What does that mean? Uh, the umbilical cord is wrapped around your baby. It's just something to keep an eye on. How have you been feeling, Lauren? She's, she's been having a lot of nausea. So. Ah, I can speak to the doctor about that. Nice. Julie should really be here for this. Can you try her again? Yeah. Can we do it after this? <sighs> so, is everything else looking healthy, other than the cord? I'll have to have your doctor review the photos to answer that, but I can tell you the gender. No, yes. no, no, Julie has to be here for that. Right. Okay, yeah. No. Well, wait. Uh, Julie is your midwife, correct? Mm -hmm. With a high-risk pregnancy like this, I do recommend having one available. If you're having trouble, the hospital actually has a program that would be perfectly suited. We have suited. a midwife. Right. Of course. Can you try her? Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Anthony steps out. Later, he and Lauren pull up to Julie's house. I'm just gonna stop in and say hi. No, you haven't been feeling good all day. I'll go in and check on her. You stay in the car. I'll be quick. I just need to make sure she's okay. Lauren gets out of the car. Anthony joins her on the porch. Julie, we're coming in. Did you hear that? Hear what? Maybe she's not home. I'm just gonna check upstairs. Lauren enters the bathroom and looks around. She steps on the cuticle cutter with her bare foot. Oh! Ow! Blood drips from her foot. Oh. Someone closes the door. Lauren walks over and finds the doorknob won't turn. Hello, Anthony! Someone locked me in here! Help me! There's somebody here! Help me, please! Hey! Hey, what's wrong? There's somebody in the house. The door slammed behind me. There was somebody there. Oh, oh, oh are you okay? I, I didn't see anyone. No, you have the door slammed behind me and someone locked it. The door was locked. There's someone in here. There's no one here. Later, a police officer leaves the house. Thanks. A detective speaks to Lauren and Anthony on the porch. So we did a brief walkthrough and there was nothing obviously stolen or damaged. No sign of struggle. The back door was open, but it doesn't look like it was forced open by any means. Julie would never leave her house with her front door unlocked. Well, it's common for people who live around here to not lock their doors. They move here for the safety of the neighborhood. There was someone in the house, I'm sure of it. Did you get a look at them? I, no, but I heard them. What about you, Mr. Campbell? Anthony glances at Lauren, then looks back at the detective. I, <clears throat> I didn't see anyone. Hmm. Officer Brooks, to be frank, we know Julie very well. She delivered Lauren and was like a second mother to her. She's been our midwife for the past six months. We came to her house because she stopped answering our calls. Regardless of whether or not someone was in the house today, we think something may have happened to her. No, well, you did the right thing by calling us. We'll ask her neighbors when they saw her last. 
If it's been more than 24 hours, we'll ask you to come down to the station and uh, file a missing persons report. Thank you. Okay. In the meantime, try to get some rest. I'm sure we'll track down Julie. Anthony holds his hand on Lauren's baby bump as the detective and a uniformed officer leave. Lauren nuzzles her head against Anthony's neck. At night, Julie lies in the backseat of a car with her arms and legs bound, with a blindfold on. She writhes, attempting to break free. The car stops outside a house. The door by Julie's head opens, then someone puts a sack over Julie's head. In their white brick home with an attached two-stall garage, Lauren and Anthony brush their teeth. Are you feeling okay? Yeah. I'm fine. She walks out of the bathroom. Anthony rinses his toothbrush, then follows her into the bedroom. I'm just worried that what happened at Julie's house might have triggered some of your anxieties. You really didn't see anyone in the house? You're exhausted and stressed and probably remembering everything that happened with your mom. What I heard was real. I never said it wasn't. He sets his watch on a nightstand, then gets on the bed and kisses Lauren's belly. I think we should take a couple of days and spend some time in the cabin. It's too soon, you know that. Thank you, I know you're just trying to help. He kisses her shoulder, then her lips. He caresses her stomach. He slides his hand down into her pajama shorts. If you're stressed, I can <laughs> help you unwind a little. Okay, we should stop. We honestly, we should stop. We have to be careful. If anything were to happen, Julie would be here in five minutes. Mm. I can't stop thinking about her, Anthony. The last time I saw her, it was like she wanted to tell me something and then held back. Like she was scared to stress me out. Well, people sometimes hold back the truth from people they don't want to hurt. She's never had to hold back anything from me in her life, ever. And if she thought it would hurt your feelings, she might. People are wired to circumvent conflict. It's called avoidance coping. Okay, it's just stop. Maybe she no longer felt up to be your midwife, and rather than be honest with you, she left. She would stop. never. You're being argumentative. I'm sorry. You've never been anything but patient with me. That's why you're going to make such a great mother. So thoughtful and loving. I hope so. And all I want is to be a great dad. So. Let's be safe rather than sorry. I'm calling the hospital tomorrow. There's got to be another midwife willing to take on a crazy couple. Like I us. just want Julie. And you'll get her when she comes out of the woodwork. But we are in the final stretch now. The due date is a few weeks away. We need someone here now. The next day in their kitchen, Anthony tosses a salad as Lauren speaks on the phone. Yeah, her first name is Julie. No, a Julie. J U L I E. Can you hold for a moment? Yeah, I can hold. Have you heard anything from Detective Brooks? It's only five o'clock, huh? If he hasn't phoned by eight, I'll call the station and see if there's an update. If you're feeling anxious, remember the five steps of mindfulness. Hey, stop it. I'm not your patient anymore. That stop so I can we got married. Maybe so, but the same techniques still apply. Oh, hi. Yes, I'm still here. Um, sorry, there's nobody by that name here. Okay. Yeah, thank you for trying. Have a good day. 
Me too. Still no sign of her? Uh, I've literally called every hospital in the city. And I forgot to set the timer for the chicken. Oh. I, you know, I don't know if I can do this. I talked to the hospital and they said that she's the only midwife available for immediate and full-time work. He pulls the chicken from the oven. And for all we know, she'll be your new best friend. I don't need a best friend, you're my best friend. And whoever she is, she's only temporary. They kiss, then go to answer the door. Oh. Hi, I'm Lauren. Hi. You must be Olivia. Yes. Wow, you have such a beautiful home. Thank you. I'm Anthony. Hi. Come on in. The brunette woman in her 40s enters their home with a bottle of sparkling cider. Later, the three of them sit in the living room. I run an art gallery. Or, I mean, I did. <laughs> and so, my mom used to run it, and it was her pride and joy, and then now I run it for her. That's so lovely. Um, and what do you do? He's actually a professor of psychology and ethics at Weston. No way. Wow. <laughs> so I, I just want to make sure that you understand that this position is most likely temporary. We had a midwife with us for the entire pregnancy, and if she comes back wanting her job... No, I completely understand. We're also willing to pay whatever it takes. I just need to make sure that I can call you day or night and that you have the skills to protect our baby if complications occur. I can do you one better. I can promise to save you and your baby. And you'll be my only priority. I won't take on any other clients. <laughs> well, I think you're hired. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, toast. Yeah. <laughs> to new relationships and creating miracles. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Sorry. Detective Brooks calls Lauren. She spills cider on Anthony. Oh, Lauren! Seriously. Oh my gosh, I'm so Lauren. sorry. I'm sorry. Um, it's the detective. Is everything okay? Yeah. Yeah, it's just, um, I'm, I just need to go take a call. Oh, no, 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 no. You stay put. I'll step out and I'll bring some towels back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hi, Mrs. Campbell, it's Detective Brooks. We found something. A string of emails between Julie and a man named Harrison Chambers. Does that ring a bell? Harrison, yeah, that's Julie's ex-husband. They divorced a few years ago. He moved back to London. Well, it looks like they got back together again. She took a one-way trip to London two days ago. Is that around the same time frame she went silent? No, there's no way that she would fly across the world for him. And even if she did, she would return my calls and my texts. Well, I can't explain her motives. I just wanted to tell you that it looks like she's uh, OK. Well, are we sure that a string of emails is proof? I mean, have you actually spoken to her? I assure you that we made every effort possible to reach out to her personally. <laughs> Sometimes people don't want to be found, and the way that Julie up and left, that might be the case. No, it's not. She is not like that. I promise you. Lauren, look at this as good news. Your friend is alive and well. Olivia hides around the corner listening to Lauren. That night, Lauren stands in the bedroom with a solemn expression. Anthony walks into the room behind her. He steps up to her and places his hands on her shoulders. He kisses the top of her head. Come on, baby, we got good news today. Julie's okay. Then who was in her house when I was inside? You didn't actually see anyone. So you think I'm making it up? Listen to me, Anthony. I swear on my life, on our unborn child's life, Julie wanted to tell me something. A couple of weeks ago, at your doctor's appointment, I overheard Julie talking on the phone to Harrison. I got the gist of the conversation. I knew she was planning on leaving. Why didn't you tell me? I was, I was hoping I could change her mind. I knew her leaving in the middle of your pregnancy would break your heart and cause you even more stress. 
I didn't want to risk anything happening to the baby. So she's really gone? He kisses her forehead. She lays her head on his chest and he strokes her hair. At 8.04 a.m., Lauren jolts up in bed. She looks at the empty space next to her in bed. She leans over and pukes in a trash can. She checks her phone and sees that she has an email from Julie. Dear Lauren, I'm so sorry about everything. I shouldn't have left without telling you first, but there was an emergency with Harrison's health back in London. So I've popped off to take care of him and support his family. We were together for so many years. I can't just abandon him in his time of need. You'll have to email me if you need anything. My cell doesn't have an international plan. Love you, Julie. Lauren gets out of bed and heads to the kitchen where Anthony chats with Olivia. Never to be heard from again. <laughs> this is my secret recipe. She gives him a smoothie. It's packed with whole foods, vitamins, and all the things you need for nice hair, strong nails, and growing a healthy baby. Well, I hate to break it to you, but I'm not the one growing a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Mmm, that is amazing. I have a smoothie for you, too. I was hoping for our first day together, I could get you set up on this maternity app. Lauren pukes in the sink. Oh my God, this is Campbell. Are you okay? <clears throat> yeah, I'm fine. I'm just feeling a little nauseous. I think it's the anxiety of having a new midwife. I just... Oh, and I have to get to work. Are you two going to be okay? I don't think I can do this today. Hey. We'll be fine, Anthony. Really. Um, but I can give you your space if you need, but I think you should try my signature smoothie. It's been a dream for mothers who struggle with late-term nausea. Okay. Lauren takes a sip. It's nice, but I don't think it's a miracle cure. Actually, I'm feeling a lot more settled. <clears throat> this is... Delicious, thank you. Well, as you've experienced, anxiety and uncertainty can trigger nausea, but mild foods help keep the stomach acid low. And I also know some breathing techniques to help with anxiety. It's, it's all here in the app. Oh, hey. well, then I will head out. Okay. Bye, honey. Bye. I hope you're feeling better soon. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs> okay, so let me download that. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So. Do you want to just type in your birthday and stuff? Yeah. In a montage, Lauren sets up the Mommy app. Lauren gets another ultrasound, this time with Olivia by her side. Lauren beams as the video monitor shows her unborn child. Olivia makes another fruit smoothie and pours it into a glass as Lauren and Anthony smile nearby. She passes the glass to Anthony. Outside, Lauren and Olivia sit by the pool and look at a baby names book together. <laughs> so what are you gonna do? Are you and Anthony figuring it out? Should we pick a letter? Yeah, let's pick a letter. Okay. Okay. All right, let's start. Okay. Later, the women tidy up and Lauren lifts up the box for the birdhouse security camera. What's that? I uh, nothing. Would you mind finishing the crib? It's just something. I need to do. Lauren goes to Julie's house. She takes a key from underneath a rug in front of the door, then lets herself in. She passes through the house and finds Julie's laptop sitting on the counter. She types in a password, but it is incorrect. She tries again to no avail. 
she walks over to the refrigerator and takes three sticky notes with passwords on them from the side of the fridge. She tries the first password. She tries the second password. She enters the third password. She closes the laptop. She looks over by the fridge and something catches her eye. She walks over and takes a pink purse off a shelf. She opens it and pulls out a billfold. You leave the country without your favorite purse and your wallet. Where are you? She calls Anthony and places the laptop under her arm as she leaves. Hi, you've reached Anthony Campbell. Please leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. On campus, a young woman with glasses runs code on Anthony's computer in his office. Lauren enters. Anthony, why aren't you answering your cell? I think they don't know about her security camera. Who are you? I'm, um, Rachel. Um, IT sent me. Something's wrong with the computer, but... Seems to be fine now, though. Where's Anthony? This is his office. Um, Professor Campbell no longer works here. <laughs> Excuse me? What are you talking about? I'm his wife. I think I should know where he works. You're his wife? What are you really doing? Oh, uh, you know, yeah, uh, you know what? Okay, I guess you won't mind if I call security down here to double check. No, okay, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. I wasn't doing anything bad. I'm just worried about a friend of mine. I, I didn't do anything to his computer. Please don't tell anyone I was here. The girl looks at Lauren, terrified. I won't. Lauren hangs up the phone. Thank you. So, what do you mean Anthony no longer works here? The police asked me not to talk about it. The police? I'm sorry, I've said too much already. You should talk to your husband. Rachel starts to leave. Wait, wait, are, are you actually good at this IT stuff? Why? Could you track an IP address for me from an email? As a favor, please. Since I won't tell anybody about this. Fine. Later, Lauren arrives at home. Anthony? Hey. She walks into the kitchen where he stands at the counter by a Chinese takeout container. Everything okay? Fine. Why aren't you at work? Looking over some case studies from home today. Is there anything you want to tell me? Like the fact that you don't work at Weston anymore? His head drops. I didn't want to tell you. So it's true. They fired you. Calm down. They didn't fire me. I quit. Then what was the whole thing about the police being involved? Hey guys. Olivia strolls in. Everything okay? Did I come at a bad time? Uh, Olivia, do you mind giving us a minute? Yeah, for sure. Olivia heads into another room. Who did you talk to? Why does it matter who I talk to? Some girl named Rachel. <laughs> Rachel. Of course. I didn't want to stress you out. Can you stop? Just cut the crap. Tell me what happened. Be honest. I had to file a restraining order against her. She was obsessed with me, acting inappropriately, following me back to my office. I wasn't even her professor. She just came to me as the guidance counselor for a couple of sessions. She was in your office today. Again? I am so sorry you ran into her. I got so uncomfortable. And I've been wanting to go back to private practice for a long time. It was easier to just quit than to keep dealing with her. I was worried she was going to start showing up at the house or something. Then why on earth did you not tell me? What if she did show up to the house? What was I supposed to do? I know, and I'm sorry. Stop. With the pregnancy? I knew any amount of stress 
could hurt the baby. Yeah, well, what about me? Come on. You're lying to me. It's like I don't even know who you are anymore. Listen to me, Lauren. I need time to think. I don't want to talk to you. Lori. Stop it. Do not follow me. She turns and walks away. Anthony hits the counter. Olivia enters the living room, bumping into Lauren. Sorry. Lauren gives her a brooding stare, then walks away. Olivia looks over at Anthony as he angrily paces in the kitchen. In a room with wooden walls and a single lamp on the floor, Julie lies on a dingy mattress. She shakes the black sack off her head and scans her surroundings. Her arms are bound behind her back. She sits up, then gets to her feet. She moves over to a door and places her ear against it. She tries to pull her hands free, but fails. She spots a nail protruding from one of the boards in the wall. She attempts to cut through the rope around her wrists. At home, Lauren enters the kitchen and walks over to a small blue backpack. Next to it she finds a Weston student ID of Olivia's, then Anthony and Olivia enter the room together. Gimlet? Okay. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I'm so sorry, I was just surprised I didn't know you went to Weston. I thought maybe you had mentioned that considering Anthony's a professor there. Why didn't you mention that on your resume? It's just one class a week on nutrition. I really didn't think it was relevant. Really, I, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. It's not. In the wooden paneled room, Julie continues to cut at the frayed rope with the nail. The rope snaps. She opens the sliding wooden doors and enters a living room. She looks around frantically. She sees a framed picture of a mother and daughter on a coffee table. Bailey! Oh god, it's Bailey's cabin! Up in the corner of the room, a red light begins to flash on a small motion detector box. At Lauren's, Olivia gets a notification on her phone. Her eyes go wide with panic. I have to go. What's wrong? Um, my client just went into labor. I'm so sorry, Lauren. Wait, no, I, really I, I thought to... we discussed that you wouldn't be seeing any other clients, only us, especially this close to the due date. It's not my client, it's just another patient. I'm on call at the hospital. She's in labor, you guys. I'm so sorry, I have to go. She runs out the door. Anthony turns to Lauren with a look of discontentment. Why are you so hard on her? Don't you think she's acting a little strange? Not mentioning that she has other clients, not mentioning that she went to your school. Lauren? Don't Lauren me, you're not my doctor. I am just worried about you. You've been acting a little on edge, overreacting about insignificant things. Who cares what school Olivia goes to? And maybe she is just on call this week. I need you to stop worrying about me and start being honest with me. I can worry about myself. He shakes his head as she leaves. Julie rushes out of the cabin. She looks around, then runs down the gravel driveway, surrounded by trees. She stops and scans her surroundings. A car approaches her. The car stops and she runs over to the passenger door. She looks in the window at the driver and terror washes across her face. No, 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 no. She flees and the car drives after her. No! Ah! The car hits her and she topples to the ground. The car stops. At night, Lauren sits in bed on Julie's laptop. She closes the laptop, then slides it under the bed. The next day, Olivia enters Anthony's home office. Hey, where's Lauren? Probably at the gallery. So, um, I just found out the sex of the baby. 
Do you want to know what it is? Anthony gets up from his desk. Uh, tell me. It's a boy. <laughs> he hugs her. Lauren enters. Hey. Uh, I just got this notice in the mail saying we're late on the heating. Lauren, you shouldn't be standing for long periods of time. The position of your son could put pressure on the arteries. Right in your head? Oh my God. I, I thought she knew already. No, it's okay, really. It's what? great. Oh. We're having a boy. <laughs> Lauren storms off. Lauren? It's okay. Lauren! Lauren heads outside and makes her way to her car. Anthony follows her out. Lauren? Where are you going? Finding out the gender should have been our moment, not hers. Baby, come on. She just made a mistake. Don't be like that. I need to clear my head. You're overreacting. She gets in the car. Later, Lauren sits in her vehicle in a parking lot. She answers her phone. Hello? Who's this? It's Rachel. From Weston? Hi, Rachel. Um, I'm sorry, but I don't actually think we should be talking. Finally talk to your husband, then. I have the IP address you wanted, but if you'd rather not speak to me... Wait, no, no, no. What, what did you find? I tracked the IP address the Amol was set from. That was fast. All the information is accessible from your email provider, if you know where to look. But it was definitely sent from someone in the city. So she's not in England. She wasn't when she sent this. And where is she? Julie regains consciousness on the dingy mattress on the ground. Her wrists and ankles are bound and she has a gag tied around her mouth. <laughs> She slides down the mattress, then sits up. With great effort, she manages to get to her feet. She tugs open the doors and finds them chained together with a padlock. She sticks her head through the gap in the door. She drops to her knees, then falls over. Detective Brooks sits at his desk. He digs through paperwork, then picks up his phone and answers. Detective Brooks. Mrs. Campbell, how have you been? I traced the IP address of an email that Julie sent, and apparently she's not in London. She's still here. Slow down. You traced an IP address. Yeah, well, not me specifically. Well, IP addresses can be changed using a proxy server. Yeah, Julie wouldn't know how to do that. I don't even know how to do that. Many people who are trying to run away or disguise their current location might choose when are you going to give up the idea that she left voluntarily mrs campbell you're going to need to trust us lauren hangs up lauren arrives at julie's house and finds that the key is gone from under the doormat She tries the door, but it's locked. She slams her shoulder into the door. Stop! You shouldn't be exerting that much force, please. It's too risky. Olivia, what are you doing here? I came to apologize about the gender reveal earlier. I really thought that Anthony had told you. I'm so sorry, Lauren. I never meant to take that moment away from you. Did you follow me? Yeah, I uh, saw your location on the maternal app? The app tracks my location. I thought it tracked my pregnancy. Oh, it's important 
that we always know where each other is. In case of an emergency, if you went into labor and I couldn't find you, I just have to go What to do you mean you thought Anthony already told me? I found out a few days ago, and he asked me to tell him so that he could surprise you. But I guess he hasn't gotten around to it yet. What's going on? Seriously, Lauren, you can talk to me. I feel like everything is falling apart. It's totally normal to feel like that. I mean, you have a lot on your plate. It's not normal. I feel crazy, but I know I'm right. I know something bad has happened to Julie. I thought she was in the UK. No, she's not in London. She's still here somewhere. Lauren, I know it's hard to think about, but the police have been looking for her. No, I had someone trace her IP address, and she is definitely still in the city. Who traced her IP address? Long story short, do you remember that girl, Rachel, the one from Weston, the one that Anthony and the I- The one that Anthony has a restraining order against. Yeah, well, I didn't know who she was or what had happened when I talked to her. I just figured she was good with computers and I was desperate. You need to stay away from her. I don't think that you should contact her again. I don't want her to show up at your house or anything. I, I can't believe that Anthony didn't warn you about her. <sighs> You're right. It was stupid. I shouldn't have. I just, I don't know what's happening. I feel like Julie's hurt or maybe she's hurting herself. Kind of like what your mom did. How, how did you know that? I got access to your medical records when I became your midwife. Lauren, all this paranoia and anxiety that you're feeling is totally normal, especially after the trauma that you've been through. But you need support. Have you spoken to Anthony about this or talked to your doctor about it? I'm sure Anthony knows some great psychologists that can help you. I'm fine. I have a psychologist, thank you. Okay. When was the last time you talked to them? Lauren, I really think that you should talk to someone about this. I'm starting to get worried about you. And Anthony is too. I need to go home. And I need you to back off. I... Lauren heads to her car. Anthony types on a laptop at his desk when Lauren arrives back home. He gets up. Did Olivia find you? You shouldn't run off like that. You knew the gender of the baby. I am sick of arguing with you over things that don't matter. No, you don't get to do that. What is going on with you? You're going behind my back. You're making shit up. You're lying I straight to my face. only ever done what I thought was best for you. Yeah, you want to know what's best for me? I want you in the guest room. Lauren. Stop it, Anthony. You're not allowed to do that. I'm serious. I'm done. She leaves in a huff. Julie lies on the mattress. In the cabin's kitchen, Olivia freaks out. I'm done with this! She throws a frying pan, then smashes her face into the counter repeatedly. <coughs> Julie whimpers on the mattress. <coughs> Olivia opens the doors. Hey, Julie. She sits down next to Julie. Do you think this looks convincing? I need Lauren to take poor little me in. Lauren will never fall for that. Not Julie. She already has. Later, Olivia arrives at Lauren and Anthony's. She hobbles inside with her back to Lauren. Olivia, hey. Hey. Listen, I'm really sorry about earlier for blowing up at you like that. I... It's been a really stressful time lately. I'm sorry. That's okay. Totally forgiven. She turns to Lauren. Olivia, what happened? What? Who did this to you? My boyfriend. Can I stay here a couple of nights? Yeah, no, of course. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. You can stay in the guest room. The guest room I'm supposed to be staying in? We have a couch. You're staying. Thank you. Of course. 
Lauren hugs her. <laughs> Olivia smirks. A little later, Lauren brings her a blanket in the guest room. Anthony will go with you in the morning to get your things. Oh, you two are heaven sent. <sighs> no, I'm just, I'm glad you're not leaving. Yeah, me too. Oh, Lauren, do you have anywhere that I could get cleaned up tonight? Maybe have a shower? I can get the guest bathroom set up for you, but feel free to pop over to our ensuite tonight. Thank you so much. Get a good sleep. You too. Good night. Good night. Anthony sets bedding on the couch. Later, Olivia exits the master bathroom with a bottle of pills in her hand. She enters Lauren and Anthony's walk-in closet and sets the pills down, then looks through Lauren's jewelry and clothing. She holds a dress up to her and looks in the mirror. She puts on a blazer, then checks out some pearl earrings. She holds a necklace up to her neck. Hello, Mrs. Campbell. She here? takes off the blazer. Oh, yep. I'm, uh, just finishing up. She quickly puts things back. She grabs a necklace and the bottle of pills. Later, Lauren and Anthony sit and meet with a doctor. With everything we talked about, I'm worried about not taking prescriptions. You've lost 5% of your body weight, which is the threshold for hospitalization with hyperemesis. And you're still vomiting. But the meds make me feel so groggy, I can barely move. And the tiredness is excessive. I feel like I'm sleepwalking. That's a common side effect. At this point, bed rest is good for you. Well, I also feel like I'm fighting my antidepressants and my anxiety just keeps rising. And it just keeps getting worse and worse the more I can't think clearly. Well, your electrolytes are all over the place, which exacerbates the anxiety. And new mothers are often anxious, right? Justifiably. Yeah, I understand, Dr. Nelson, thank you. But I actually don't think that I need extra medication. Let's just give it one more week, okay? Yeah. Okay. I'll be good. Later, Lauren wears a blue floral dress and stares at a bottle of pills. She throws them in the trash. In the kitchen, Olivia empties pills into a smoothie, then stirs them in. Anthony and Olivia enter. Good morning. Oh, good morning. <laughs> she hides the pill capsules and bottle in a drawer, then turns and gives the smoothie to Lauren. I put pineapple in it. You should try it. You know, you don't have to keep making these if it's too much. If you like them, I will always keep making them. Anthony zips up a laptop case, then kisses Lauren's cheek as she drinks the smoothie. Uh. Well, I would love to stay with you today, but building a practice from the ground up takes Diligence. So, duty calls. Lauren rounds a corner, finishing her smoothie. She staggers through a doorway. She collapses and the glass shatters. Olivia walks in behind her. Fade to black. Lauren regains consciousness in her bed. Anthony wraps a towel around his waist. What time is it? Late. I'm just having a shower. I'll sleep on the couch. Uh, I need some water. Baby? Oh. She pulls back the covers. 
Oh. She sits up, then gets to her feet. She places a hand on her forehead as she tripes out of the bedroom. She enters the living room and sees Olivia in a robe and underwear, eating at the kitchen counter. Olivia, what are you doing? I am a supper for a late night snack. Can I get you something? You can't be walking around the house like that. It's inappropriate. It's late. I didn't think anyone would be awake. It doesn't matter. It's inappropriate. I have a husband. Your husband has more of a street than that. Olivia holds a knife. You can trust him, can't you? This is my home. I'm not asking. You're right. Olivia picks up a cutting board with cheese, apple slices, and crackers on it then throws the knife in the sink as she walks away. The next morning, Olivia brings a breakfast tray to Lauren in bed. Good morning, Lauren. <sighs> oh. oh, I don't feel good. Well, maybe you just need something to eat. Hey, your water broke. The hospitals won't admit you until you're three or four centimeters dilated. That's okay. Because I'll be here with you every step of the way. Where's Anthony? He's having breakfast. I'll let him know. But yeah. you should just try and rest and eat yeah. something if you can. I can't. No, I can't. I you can't. need your strength. Olivia holds a smoothie to Lauren's mouth. Lauren drinks some smoothie. Some more. She drinks more. Later, Lauren staggers out and finds Olivia making out with Anthony on the couch in the living room. Lauren steps back around the corner and leans against the wall as she cries. She steps back around the corner and the living room is empty. She traipses out into the living room, wearing a white nightgown. She grips her stomach as she winces in anguish. She braces herself against the wall as she continues forward. She rounds a corner. Anthony steps up behind her. Congratulations, baby. We're going to be parents. But you should be in bed no. resting. I saw you. Tell me what? God, the shit. You know what I'm talking about. I saw you. Oh, baby. You don't, you don't want some. Hey, 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 you need to lie down. I'll go get Olivia. No, I don't want her anywhere near me. I want her out of the house. She's going to keep our baby safe, Lauren. We need her. <laughs> Later, Lauren lies in bed. She's 10 centimeters dilated. I, I think it's time for her to push now. You need to breathe with me. In. Out. In. Out. You need to push, Lauren. Why, Why aren't you taking me to the hospital? There's no time, honey. This baby is coming now. Oh, God, I can't. I can't do this. I can't. Yes, you can. You have us. We can do this together. Now push. Oh, he's coming. Our baby is coming. Okay. Okay. One more time. Here we go. Ready? 
The baby slides out of Lauren, whose face shifts for pain to joy. <laughs> Olivia wipes off the baby. I'll go get him, okay? No. I'll go get him. I'll be right back. Don't go, don't I'll be right back. I'm gonna go, go get him. Don't go, please. Don't go, don't go. I'll be right back. No. I'll be right back. No. No. Anthony hurries off after Olivia. In the kitchen, Olivia speaks on the phone. Hi, my name is Olivia Wright. I just gave birth at home, and I'm wondering how I can get a birth certificate. Congratulations, Olivia. <laughs> You'll need to fill out a certificate of live birth and register it with the Department of Vital Records within the next 10 days. OK, thank you. If you have any questions with the paperwork, come into the hospital, and we can help you with everything. Uh, thanks so much. I'll be sure to come in. You looked that information up weeks ago. Yes. But now there's a record of a phone call with my voice on it, and this little guy's cries in the background. Clever. I'll be sure to bring him into the hospital, too. The more people that see me with him, the better. Yeah. Anthony kisses her. Here. She hands him the baby. Oh, hey. Hi. Anthony brings the baby back into the bedroom. How's our baby? Is everything OK? Everything is great. I just stopped struggling. Olivia took him to get cleaned up, is all. <gasps> oh my gosh, baby. Hi, baby. Oh. oh, he's beautiful. He's perfect. Yeah, he is. I checked all his vitals. He's strong and healthy. Have you thought of a name? Oh, I don't know yet. I just was so excited to meet him. <laughs> well, there's plenty of time for that. <laughs> Um, do you mind if I get a photo? Uh, yeah. Great. Great. Olivia takes photos of just the baby in Lauren's arms. Then she uploads one to Mercy General Hospital's website. <laughs> Olivia smiles at them. Later, Lauren lies on the bed with the baby, who now wears a gray onesie and hat. Lauren carries her son out to the living room and spots Olivia entering the sliding door from the pool, wrapping a towel around herself. Lauren ducks back out of sight. Later, Olivia strolls out as Lauren gives her son a bath. Hey, Mama Bear. You are so full of shit. What? I saw you walking through my house naked again. I was just using your ensuite bathroom because the drain in the guest bathroom was clogged. I want you out. Thank you for your services, but your work here is done. Thank you. Bye. Leave. Have you been taking your medication? Here. Get out of my house! Lauren knocks the blender full of smoothie out of Olivia's hand. Why would I leave my own house? Your house! Olivia smashes a glass, then screams. Oh my god! <gasps> Don't touch him! What is going on? came into the kitchen and Lauren had Liam underneath the sink and she was trying to drown him. What? And then I tried to take him away and she threw a glass at me. You bitch! She's lying. I would never hurt our child. I, why is she calling him Liam? Anthony, check her pill bottle. It's almost empty. Anthony, get her out of this house. medicating. No, I... Lauren? Okay, I would never hurt our child. Anthony, hey, look at me. I would never hurt him. You can't believe this. I don't... I don't know how those got in there. I have not been taking those. I can't believe you tried to hurt our child. She's Clearly lying. it's gone too far. Anthony. But you're going to try to tell me that I'm lying now, too? 
mean, you've been off lately, always sleeping, accusing me of random things. No, I just didn't want to believe it. What are you doing? Hello, Dr. Please. Nelson. Please, please. Anthony Campbell. No, stop. Yeah, I think it is time. Olivia creeps away with the baby. Later, two officers escort Lauren out of the house as Anthony stands with Detective Brooks. Please. I'll be right no, behind please. you. Please. Please. Thank you so much for seeing to this person named Detective Brooks. She'll be taken to a psychiatric ward for 72 hours, put on a 5150 mental health hold. Thank you. They shake hands. Later, Lauren sits on a bed in a room in the psychiatric ward. She stares at her reflection in a mirror. A nurse appears in the window of the door, then she steps inside. How's my son? Has anyone checked on him? He's safe at home. You have a call waiting. Lauren follows the woman out of the room. The woman points to a phone off the hook. Lauren goes and answers it. Hello? Hi, Lauren. Why are you doing this? You know, I never wanted a baby. It's a shame that Liam is so breakable. Please, please don't hurt him. I will do whatever you want. Sweet little Liam is motivation enough, isn't he? But I also have your friend. Julie? Olivia hangs up and tosses her phone, then sits down next to Anthony. Mm, he looks just like his daddy. Mm. He's perfect. Olivia passes him the baby. And so are you. <laughs> She'll be back after three days. That's as long as they can hold her involuntarily. The plan's going to work. And then we'll be forever. Olivia kisses him. The next day, Lauren sits with Detective Brooks. How are you feeling today? I need you to believe me, Detective, please. I would never hurt my son. Olivia is making this entire thing up. I want to believe you, but I need to get a better understanding of what's happening under your roof. She's trying to take over my life. She's trying to steal my husband, steal my baby. I saw them kissing. I saw her leave my bedroom. I just... Please, she's making this up to make me seem crazy. So, listen, any frantic or unstable behavior is just going to make them keep you in here longer. So you need to calm down. Calm, calm down? I can't calm down. There is a crazy woman who has my baby, has my best friend. I have no way of knowing if they're even okay. I can't, I can't breathe in here. All right. Let me do a little research. See if I can put your mind at ease. Where did you meet Olivia? I met her through the hospital midwife program. Had you met her before? No. Full name? Olivia Wright. OK. Let me uh, dig into this and see what I can come up with. Thank you. Try to get some rest. Detective Brooks gets up and leaves. Lauren walks up a set of stairs and approaches a desk where the nurse from the night before stands. Hi. The nurse glances up from her paperwork. Could I make a call? Get one call per day. Make it count. Hi. Hi, Rachel, it's me, Lauren. Anthony put me on a psychiatric hold. I need your help. Later, Rachel comes to visit Lauren. <sighs> Thank you so much for coming here. What are you doing in this place? Long story short, Anthony thinks I'm crazy and he's locked me up in here. I thought I could trust him, but it's like I don't even know who he is. I can't believe you ever trusted him, after what he did. 
What does that mean? You don't know? I thought you talked to him. No, what? Anthony was fired for sexual misconduct with students. This was weeks ago, just before we met the first time. Who filed the charges? I did. What? I didn't know he was married, but I rejected him. I just wasn't interested. Then he got angry, manipulative, threatened to fail me if I didn't sleep with him. He gaslit me. He said he would get my scholarship revoked. I wish I told someone sooner. When he first came on to me in our therapy sessions, I thought I was special. I, th I didn't realize. I'm so sorry. What made you finally come forward? He started doing the same thing to another girl, my old TA, Olivia. Olivia Wright? He's known her the entire time? What? Olivia took an interest in my thesis over the year. Olivia and Rachel walked together on campus. Such a good job. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Anthony was never my teacher. I'd been seeing him as a guidance counselor. I referred Olivia to him. She was going through a really tough time. Hi, Olivia. TA. Yeah. I'm Anthony. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you, too. I'm a professor here. In a session, Anthony hands Olivia tissues as she cries. Sorry. No, please. Hey. hey. It's gonna be okay. You trust me. Later. Olivia, it's wrong. He's a faculty member and he's manipulating you. You're just jealous that he loves me and not you. Olivia storms off. Olivia! Olivia and Anthony make out on a couch in the therapy office. Our friendship never recovered. Then when Anthony was fired, she vanished. That's why I was in his office that day. I was trying to find out where Olivia went. She was okay. Olivia is our midwife. Anthony's the one who convinced me to hire her, and she's the one who convinced him I was crazy, and he believed her. I can't believe he was in on it. I... They're working together? Can you break into a laptop? Why? My friend, Julie, she had a security doorbell, and I think something really bad has happened to her, and I'm afraid that Anthony and Olivia are responsible for it. Well, I probably could. Where is it? It's under my bed, in my bedroom. Just try the doors off the bedroom patio. He usually sleeps with them open and forgets to lock them. Okay. You don't think I'm crazy, right? You believe me? I do believe you. And if nobody else believes us, maybe we need to serve him some justice ourselves. The nurse enters. I'm sorry, visiting hours are over. But I'm in. I'll call when I have the laptop. The nurse walks Rachel out. Later, Rachel arrives at Lauren and Anthony's house, then enters through the patio door. She creeps into the house and spots Olivia sitting on the kitchen counter, talking with Anthony, who has his hands on her waist. Olivia holds a glass of champagne. They kiss. Rachel retrieves the laptop from under the bed. She sets the laptop on top of the bed and hacks into it. She finds the iSpy porch camera folder. She plays a video in which Julie exits her home. She glances over shoulder, then plays the next video, which shows Julie returning home. The next video shows the masked figure dressed in black walking up and entering the home. In the next video, the figure exits the home and removes their mask, revealing it to be Anthony. Rachel pulls out her phone and types something. She puts her phone back in her pocket. 
She closes the laptop and returns it under the bed. She stands up as Anthony walks in. Rachel starts to leave, but Anthony grabs her arm. What did you say to her? I told her everything that happened between us. Let me out, Anthony. He pulls a handgun from his waistband and points it at her. I can't let you leave. In a hospital, Olivia walks up to a receptionist with Lauren's son in a baby sling. Hello. Um, I had an at-home birth, and uh, I was hoping you could review my request for a birth certificate. She hands the receptionist a manila folder, then kisses the baby's head. In the psychiatric ward, Lauren wakes up in bed. She gets out of bed. She makes her way down a hallway. She runs up to a door and pounds on it. Please! Somebody knock my baby, please! The receptionist hands the folder back to Olivia, then she turns and leaves. Please! Two nurses rush over to Lauren. My baby's in there. I can hear my baby. Please. They lead her away. No, I can hear my baby. <laughs> a car drives down a street at night. Inside, Anthony points the gun at Rachel as she drives. What are you doing? You're a professor, not a murderer. I saw to it that I would never be a professor again. You're the reason my life is falling apart. You just had a beautiful baby. You don't want to do this. Just let me go. I promise I won't say anything. He scoffs at her and cocks his head. You've made that promise before. And we both know you can't keep it. He shoots her. He gets out of the car. Blood spatter covers his face. He takes off his glasses and wipes them off. He wipes off his face, then puts his glasses back on. He chucks the gun into a pond near the side of the road. He walks away. At Mercy General Hospital, Detective Brooks gets out of an elevator, looking at his phone, then he approaches a receptionist sitting at a desk. Hi. He flashes his badge. Here to speak to Rachel Davis. The woman types on her computer. Uh, sorry. She was only conscious for half an hour. And even if she was still awake, she's really in no place to give a statement. All right. Thank you. Actually, there's one more thing. I'd like to uh, talk to you about your midwife services. In particular, Olivia Wright. Not familiar with her name. Let me look her up. Doesn't look like anyone by that name is registered with our midwife program. Are you sure? W-R-I-G-H-T? Sorry. Nope. Okay. Thanks. In an office, Lauren meets with a doctor. I don't believe you're currently a danger to yourself or others. Now, it would be my advice for you to continue your stay with us. I want to go home. Well, that is your right. I'll have to note that it was against medical advice. And your medications. 
I'll have Anthony give them to me every day. I know the drill, Dr. Nelson. I just, I need, I need to go home. Mrs. Campbell, you're released from the hold. Oh, thank you. Should I call your husband? She stares at the doctor. Yeah. Later in the lobby. Are you absolutely sure you can't keep her in here longer? I'm worried that she'll try to hurt herself or the baby again. 72 hours is the longest we can do for an involuntary hold. Monitor her. If you notice any erratic behavior, just give me a call. Right. It may be time to talk about you claiming power of attorney. I'll go get her now. Thanks. Dr. Nelson, I can hold on to that for you. Of course. The doctor hands Anthony a bag of Lauren's personal possessions, then walks off. Anthony holds a bouquet of roses in one hand. He pulls out Lauren's phone from the bag. He clicks away at the phone, then puts it back into the bag. The doctor returns with Lauren. Anthony smiles. Darling. He holds his arms out wide. She turns to the doctor. Thank you. She steps up to Anthony as the doctor leaves. Hi. He hugs her. Where's our son? At home with Olivia. Tell me where truly is. I will leave you, Olivia, and the baby alone. You'll never hear from me again. Just tell me where she is. No. I'm glad you finally realized what's best for you. Come on. They leave together. Take it easy. They enter an elevator. They arrive back at home. I just need to grab my things and then I will go. But I need to say goodbye to my baby. So you're finally starting to see some reason? Tell me where Julie is and I will leave you two alone forever. That's it. You'll never see me again. I don't think she can be trusted with Liam. Please, I just need five minutes. I'll be right outside the door. <laughs> Anthony gives Olivia the bag of Lauren's things, then follows Lauren to the bedroom. The baby lies in his crib. Lauren picks him up. <sighs> Your daddy loves you. He'd never do anything to hurt you. You're going to be safe. You're going to be safe until I'm back. Okay. You're gonna be okay. Mommy's gonna come back. You're gonna be safe. Anthony talks on his phone outside the room. Is she dead? Lauren enters the hallway. Is who dead? He hangs up. Your new little friend Rachel was shot. Some kind of carjacking, apparently. A horrible accident. You're a monster. Rachel's dead? Hospitalized. I'm sure she won't make it through the night. Where's Julie? She's at your mother's old cabin. If only you would have dealt with your grief a little sooner, you might have been able to find her. Lauren storms off. Exactly as we knew she would. We should get going. We don't want to be too far behind. Mm -mm. Olivia and Anthony put their arms around each other as they walk. Lauren drives up to the cabin. She gets out of her car and rushes up the stairs to the porch.
pauses and looks at a sign by the door, which reads, Mama Bailey's cabin, then she heads inside. Julie? She crosses the living room. Julie? Julie, it's okay. It's okay, I'm here. I'm gonna get... Lauren spots an axe nearby. She runs over and grabs it. She bashes off the chain. Julie, Julie. Oh my God, you're all right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I can't believe they did this to you. Lauren, Anthony, I saw him with her, with Olivia. He was cheating. I should have said something. It's okay. But you just seemed so happy and I didn't want to ruin everything for you before I could fix it all. He took me and locked me up in here. Anthony's one who took you. At first, and it's been Livy ever since. I have no idea why they're keeping me here. Oh my God. Oh God, it's okay. Pretend okay. you're still tied up. Okay. Here. Okay. Okay. Right Be careful. Lauren runs out of the room and Julie lies down on the mattress. Olivia charges at Lauren who swings the axe at her, but Olivia catches it. Olivia hits Lauren in the face, knocking her to the ground. Olivia pushes the axe handle against Lauren's neck. I've been looking forward to this. Olivia swings the axe, cut to black. Lauren regains consciousness and Olivia stands over her as her vision comes into focus. I thought I would leave you alone. That was part of the deal. You let me save Julie. I would leave you alone. Hmm. I'm calling the police. Actually, we're going to be calling Dr. Nelson. It's pretty messed up for you to hold Julie hostage in your cabin. But now we understand why he didn't want Anthony coming up here. It's a shame that your depression got this bad. Killing your friend and yourself at your mother's cabin. He's never could never leave you. Anthony steps up. Mm. Won't he? You're the only one with a psychiatric record and a history of harm. We knew that you would come running here without thinking as soon as you found out that your friend was in danger. You played right into our hands. Anthony, no. Hmm. Anthony, we have a son. Can you really live with yourself? We've been over for a long time. How long have you been planning this? Well, that doesn't matter. How long? Ever since my heart met its other half. Olivia kisses him. Anthony, stop! Anthony, stop. Anthony, you shot Rachel, and then you put our son in danger. I was never going to let anything happen to Liam. That was all I ever wanted, to be a father. You knew that. We tried for years, and nothing. And then I finally meet someone perfect. And all of a sudden, you're pregnant. And I have to put up with you for another nine months. At least I won't have to put up with you for the rest of my life. <laughs> Olivia will make a better mother than you ever would. You will never be my son's mother. Never! According to the paperwork, I already am. When I met Anthony, we both knew that we were meant to be together. I ran away from Western for him. Anthony holds a fire poker to Lauren's throat. You know, Rachel was worried about you. She was worried something bad happened to her friend. What does he think of you now? I did what I had to do. I made my own perfect little life. You had it all. A beautiful house, a gorgeous husband, a perfect little life. And then you had it all. Go oh, waste. Sitting around moping. <laughs> It's better that I have it, because I deserve it. What are you going to do? What are you going to do now? 
this. No, no, Anthony, no, 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 Anthony, no! Olivia puts a noose around Lauren's neck and lifts her. Anthony turns his back to her. Julie rushes in and checks Olivia. Lauren pulls off the noose, then grabs the axe and hits Anthony in the head and he drops. Olivia chokes Julie. Chris! Die! Lauren brings the axe blade to Olivia's throat. This is over. For good. Later, emergency vehicles surround the cabin. Mrs. Campbell, your son is waiting for you in the car directly out front. An officer walks Olivia in handcuffs. Lauren hurries outside. Baby, hi. It's okay. Mommy's here. It's okay. Hi, Mommy's here. It's okay. Hi. Mommy's here. Detective Brooks walks up. Lauren Campbell. I don't know if I should congratulate you on your bravery or apologize for your circumstance. I deeply apologize. I'm sorry I didn't take your concerns more serious when you first voiced them. It's really gonna be okay. They look at her sitting on the back of an ambulance. She's in rough shape, but I think she'll be okay. And what's gonna happen to them? Well, Anthony will be charged with first degree attempted murder and conspiracy. And Olivia will be charged with everything from impersonating a midwife kidnapping, abuse, and attempted murder. They have a long stay in prison ahead of them. It's okay. Is there any update on Rachel? Looks like she's gonna pull through. Oh, thank God. You might wanna let Olivia know. Why? They were friends once. Do you think she'll care? Maybe. The detective leaves her. She looks down at her son. It's okay. Hi. Brooks steps up to the police cruiser where Olivia sits. Lauren wants you to know that Rachel is alive. <laughs> Olivia weeps. Lauren cradles her son. Nobody's ever gonna hurt you. She gently strokes his head. Text. Three months later. Lauren's son lies in a crib. She picks him up. Oh. Rachel and Julie stand beside her. So do we finally get to know what name we decided on? His name is Bailey. Just like your mother. That's <laughs> so beautiful. I <laughs> so <Sweet soon. laughs> Yeah, baby. <laughs> Julie hugs Lauren. Hello, the Kiva Sen Kupsunda Ki drawing. A Danta Korajana Manamal color pencil by one policy. Keep up a Danta Korbo, Kiki Rong pencil like me. A video Jamla Pradesh share Korbo. A video that I have put up with the Kuntalabusta, keep a bit on the Porta Hai. Children, video best day to the Kinney.